No, really? this is everyone. Yep. Yep. We're yep. the only losers on duty on Friday. Jesus Basically. Christ. Yeah. That's okay. All right, anyways, welcome to a shift two meeting. Um. <laughs> I know we haven't had those in a, in a bit, and they're kind of sporadic, depending on what's happening during a shift. Uh, there's kind of a couple things that I kind of want to go over real quick, so we're on the same page. Uh, one, of course, being uh, the gang really sh shooting stuff we talked about. I know that was kind of brought up in a little bit in a previous incident, but the rule of thumb is pretty simple, okay? If you respond to a gang turf, um, obviously don't go in there by yourself. Make sure you gather intel, surround the place. Then once you have enough backup, we can move in with lights and sirens and use the megaphone to let them know we're coming in. Uh, second, if there's a highly popular area and they're engaged in a firefight and you tell them to stop and they continue to do so, then engage with them and neutralize the threat as soon as possible. Any questions regarding that? Um, can I make a, a, a suggestion for that? I might be crazy here on this one, yeah, go but ahead. May, maybe having a, a superior make the call on to that, you know, like I wouldn't, I mean, even... I asked Bison, is Bison here? I had asked Bison yesterday what to do because I was unsure and he made the call. Yeah, Bison, but... can you tell us what happened so, exactly from your perspective? So, yeah. Which, so yesterday, I think it was the right call, by the way, but... So yesterday, uh, members of Chang Gang and members of BBMC were oh, going nice. at each other a couple different times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Kane knows. laughs> oh, I can give some insight. Go ahead. I can give some insight after. Uh, yeah, yeah. Give me that after this, if that's okay. Um, so essentially what had happened was, uh, was they were actively shooting each other. It was just uh, two units, but three officers, me, Claire, and... Uh, gunner uh we arrived on scene and he was like what do you want to do and i said well it's just three of us and like 12 of them we're not going to get involved right now uh because obviously i would prefer uh four two three to six seven four excuse me i would prefer uh people to then, not uh how do i put this i just got the statement from miss harlow and dropped her back off we'll at the hospital we'll those two, uh, uh, she claims that mike block we'll shot, shot three and individuals we'll during, during their time the together later. As, as well as ran over another, I just want to confirm what charges you would like to hit him with for the three groups are going at each just, other and other than kidnapping. I have his um, uh, charges so far another, on there. It should be good right now. Just add her uh, statement, and then uh, if know, we have any else as far as evidence that can back up what she said, we'll press it later. Gang shootout kind of deal. Yeah, but who cares if we have another hell week? It's just like, oh, you're gonna get your period. It's like, okay, yeah, I know. Uh, it's not even about yeah, hell week. I mean, uh, the I most important just to not get shot down whenever I'm just standing at it's like somewhere once trying to get my month, life to change. A week is literally like the entire PD having a period and everyone's bleeding. Oh my god. I'm not used to that. I don't like that. You got a frustration okay, recently. Well, you think we like it? I'm not saying well, you like that's it, not the but point. I'm not a the fan. The thing is like, y'all need to get over it. And if it happens, then whatever the fuck, just fucking, I don't know, bring some extra tampons. Or I'm with copper. Underwear, like twice they are a day. good for gunshot wounds. You cannot control the actions of other people. You can only control what you can control, right? Yeah, if they, you can. If they you can be... manipulate and lie to them and control them. If you, they want to be petty time. and they want to declare hell week because a cop intervened during a gang shootout. That's on them, honestly. I think you just um do yeah, yeah. your boss. You, okay, well. The, the, I main, have, um... the main point of what happened yesterday was I didn't want three uh, hmm. three or four cops getting shot down by eight to twelve people me. because we didn't have the units and they're actively shooting each other with all uh, class twos. So I made the call to hold off and then I, you know, let them get down to like dwindling numbers or finish their own thing. And then we finally had other units show up and I said, all right, everybody go in with lights and sirens blaring, tell them to get the fuck out of the area. And then we cleaned up all the dead bodies and put out warrants for everybody else. No, I get that. I think, uh, like I said, it's, it's not really um, black and white when it comes to making that call because you have to see what's happening in front of you. And as a commanding officer, you can make that call on the field as far as, hey, is it a good time to intervene now? Do we engage right away? Do I have numbers and do I have backup? Because the second you pull that trigger, they might turn around and start shooting you guys together, thinking you're the enemy, right? So. Well, at the same time, like I said, if we want to try to prevent any major shootouts in highly popular areas. If you can stop that, great. If you can't, Try your best to contain as much as possible. Any questions regarding that? I would just like to say, uh, I was there yesterday. I was in the car. Shot down, covered in blood, Bison. I knew it! I say, <laughs> you made the right decision. It huh? seems like everyone there was pretty fucking angry, ready to kill. I was driving around with the boys, catching up, just saying what's up. Next thing you know, a fucking car comes up. These these shootouts can happen anywhere. It can happen fucking anywhere. They pull up and they start fucking blasting us. I go down. They're all fucking fighting. I'm in the car. I see the cops pull. I'm like, oh my god, I'm about to get more fucking bullets into my car. Bison realized he read the situation perfect, I believe. Well, that's good. Saved that's good. More people fuck? from dying. I'm glad you're okay, Mr. K. 
Well, t to be fair, I am a one-man SWAT team. I'm pretty sure I could have shot all of them. I mean, one of them yelled out, there's still like two or three up and running around while three of them or four of them were still driving around in a car. So we, we could have gone in and shot all of them, but I didn't want to risk somebody coming up behind us while we were trying to do stuff and shooting us in the back. That was my main concern with only three of us being there. Yeah, I mean, it seemed like you made the best out of what you, the cars were dealt to you. So, I mean, I wouldn't blame yourself too much, right? So, like I said, um, having consistent response to these gang-related shooting can be very difficult because it's not the same every single time. All we could do is try and contain it, preserve life, not take it. And then if there's still a threat, we try and neutralize it. All right, anything else you guys want to bring up um, during the meeting that happened recently? Um... Um, uh, is every is everyone up to date on the on on vault response as well? Oh, the casino blueprint. Thank you so much for reminding me. Yeah. So, um, Brian, did you work on that by the way? Uh, yes. Okay, so I'm gonna give you the rundown, uh, the watered down version. Uh, Mr. Watson was very kind, and he helped us by providing us with a casino blueprint of the place. So, if there's any, what a um, great guy. Any, any uh, you know. Casino response through dispatch of the vault being tampered with. You should be able to know the layout. Brian's going to make an investigation report. And we're going to toss an announcement with that report number. So you as an officer, and if you're SWAT or not, can go into the investigation report, use the pictures as a reference to see the interior so you know what you're dealing with and what you're walking into. Any questions regarding that? All right, second. When it comes to the casino response, it's pretty simple, right? If you have 12 members for SWAT, then deploy SWAT and have those 12 members start working their way from the inside down to the vault. However, let's say you only have six or seven and you don't feel very confident in deploying SWAT because going in there might be a suicide. The best course of action is to stay outside, set up a parameter and get ready for them to leave and chase after them. Do not engage in a firefight with them, just chase after them. However, if you have 12 members inside, then you can engage with them with SWAT and try to take them out. Does that make any sense? Yes. So, so basically what you're saying, SWAT's the only one that goes inside. Um, if they are, when they come out, uh, units will pursue. And then on, let's say on the, and if there's you know an only pursue, if SWAT is unable to be deployed or, um, or, um, they left as soon as SWAT was deployed. And then the other thing is if SWAT goes down, can you explain that situation? Correct. Just so it's clear so, as well. Typically on a SWAT deployment is always uh, up to 12 members, depending on the, on the ratio of criminals inside. Let's say there's like seven suspects, for example, which is not normal. You would have 14 SWAT members. And let's say those uh, 14 SWAT members did go down completely. All those SWAT members will take the airlift and the officers on the outside, all they do is basically just um, continue that parameter. Do not, do not allow any other civilians or other parties to get involved or go inside and let the people who um, were part of the SWAT uh, deployment uh, take the airlift, and the suspects who shot SWAT or got away from the SWAT deployment uh, basically just uh, open up the barriers and let them drive out of here. Does that make any sense? Yes, sir. Yes, Chief. Yeah, no, 100%. Hell so yeah! Much. All right. Uh, no, I'm serious. Does that make any sense? Because I, I need some clarification. That way there's no issues going for because this might happen again. Sorry, uh, I was late. I had a head headache on the way here. Could I? No. Could you guys tell me what happened? Yeah, no, we're talking. Oh darn, Claire. We're talking about the oh. SWAT deployments basically and what's happening, and we're saying that if twelve members who are part of SWAT deploy into the casino, and they mm -hmm. end up getting wiped or taken out, then officers on the outside should open the barriers and allow the suspect inside to leave without much resistance, or trying to make apprehension. However, you can go back inside and collect evidence and take pictures. Okay, understood. I know. I mean, the SWAT response is literally the same as it always has been. Correct. So yeah. there's nothing new. Correct. Just reiterating the old. I heard there might have been some Pikachu surprise faces the other day with a similar announcement. But right. It's just reiterating what should have already been happening. I mean, it's just a reminder because it's been a while since so we deployed SWAT and now it's going to become more common. Like I said, the biggest thing is understanding that, hey, can I deploy SWAT? Do I have 12 competent officers that can help me take out these bad guys that are barricaded inside? Because... You are going to go in there. They are going to have the advantage because you're going to have the cover, right? So you need to make sure that call on the field is the right one. There's no shame with being, staying outside and then chasing after them when they try to leave instead, using whatever numbers you have available to you.
And um, if SWAT is unable to be deployed, I'll treat like a city vault response as far as like numbers, right? Like eight units and a helicopter. Uh, one question I got about that. Um, with the amount of like nooks and crannies, exits and entrances, uh, while SWAT is deployed and they, let's say, use the SWAT uh, side ent entrance to escape, do the units outside who may spot it, what do they do? Or even if, let's say, one of these individuals gets outside, do they react? Do they? Uh, yeah, of course. So let's say let's say SWAT is being deployed and they go inside, and then as soon as they go inside, the suspects are trying to leave, and they take the exit door. The people inside can try to apprehend them and stop them, um, and then obviously it will turn into a chase, and then the SWAT members will join the chase, and we can try to figure out who's going to be part of that chase or not. It's, it'll, it'll get sloppy at times or messy, but you have to keep count of. Um, Making sure we're not mixing and matching. So SWAT should only be deployed to use the factor inside only. The second you leave the casino, it should turn into a regular pursuit. Capiche? Okay. Okay. Understood, sir. And like I said, uh, something I've also told SWAT members, if you go down inside the casino, probably 1013 Bravo instead of Alpha, because I know that can be very mega distracting for other officers who are patrolling the city. And hearing that going off constantly would make anybody panic or distract be them from quiet doing while time. you're dying, guys. Be considerate of the people that are still have a life to live. Just pipe the uh, fuck down. Got it, got it. I mean, if you want to be loud, that's fine. But like I said, um, you won't be down for too long. And uh, uh, if you're an officer who's part of the SWAT deployment and you go down, and let's say I went down to like, um, I don't know, inside a room, and next to a room is a suspect inside barricaded, before taking the airlift, and if they're able to kind of grab your body, Drop your weapons and take the airlift. If they can't grab your body and you're too far away from them, then take the airlift without worrying about dropping weapons. So it's one of those things where you basically have to just pay attention before you do it. All right. Well, any other questions, comments, concern before we wrap up the meeting? It's been like 15 minutes so far. Speak up, Carter. I can't hear you. I was just thinking... I told someone to die quietly before, and they actually passed away. <sighs> yeah. Hell that yeah. Me. That was uh, Kevin Whippler, right? Oh, Whippler. my God. Yeah. Wow. I'm glad you got that off your chest, Carter. Yep. It was wild. And um, if, the SWAT mem if the SWAT numbers are not working out, let's say SWAT is being basically dog shit, and it's useless. It's not very effective. Then we can go back to the drum board and make it more effective, right? It's, uh, you know, the, the recipe could always be changed to make it better, right? It's not a one, one thing, or it's not like um, it's permanent, right? So... If you have any feedback and you want to help out or you have any um, ideas for casino SWAT deployment, let me know or, spot, or speak with the SWAT leader or any HP2 guys and kind of get their, you know, ideas floating so we can talk about future deployments. Go ahead, Saul. I was just going to say something unrelated to SWAT, but I, I finished that report. No. The Mike Block, uh, okay, perfect. Well, Mike Block is wanted. Make sure if you see him, uh, notify, you know, it's ASAP. He's been kidnapping government employees Dispatch. or doctors Show and forced them to basically um, uh, rob people for him while well, he pulls a gun at them, so mm -hmm. keep mm -hmm. that in mind. Yeah, so go ahead. Uh, well, I was just saying, you know, he, he kind of, he got me too. Yeah, yeah, they kidnapped Tessa and brought her to the uh, burger shot oh, they, and then uh, okay, had his uh, doctor person hold me at gunpoint while I negotiated them to... Uh, off. Okay, so I'm him with government, uh, kidnapping government employee and unlawful prison on you, Copper, then. Oh my god, I was so in prison. Tessa, can you... Oh, same um, with Jenny. Jenny was in prison, too. Tessa, can you add your statement Wait, as I? far as what happened? Yep. Yeah. I was in prison. He said he was going to shoot me if I didn't give him a compliment. Yep. That's not nice. Here's another... I actually have another question about the casino. Go ahead. So... Uh, it, it, in the in the event that SWAT does go down, like I'm assuming we're letting them go to make sure we could uh, uh, rescue our fallen comrades, are we still investigating the scene, or is it kind Absolutely. of just like you can go back and you collect kissings and evidence and pictures? Okay. Absolutely, perfect. Right. Okay, I just wanted to uh, just for a SWAT wipe does you. not mean it's over and everything that happened. You can just forget about it, right? It's it's oh, it's not like that. No. The okay. general idea is like if SWAT goes in there and we end up fucking up, remember mm -hmm. it's like the 12 best, right? Or not close to. So if they get fucked up, right, then at that mm -hmm. stage, it's a question of do we want to put more officer lives in danger? Correct, right. Let so. me phrase it this way. What the fuck are you going to do that 12 SWAT officers can't? 
Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to go down there and clear the situation and... You can do yeah, that after single-handedly something that like Listen, seven I, SWAT down. members couldn't actually do. Yeah, I'm a yeah, double cop I'm gunner, like, so I need you in my SWAT deployment, all right? So uh, keep them dubs coming, gunner, please. I don't, I don't know, I meant. Put down, man. I mean, I've had the SWAT teams that get deployed have fantastic grenade success rates and fantastic accuracy. So if they can't complete it, then I'm, I think the rest of us are uh, fucked. So it's not worth your life. Well, accuracy, but, yeah. okay. Well, first Sir. of all, Kesterman, the SWAT you see is not the SWAT we see because right, your SWAT is, is in bed while the real shit is going off. Right, right. Yeah. It just depends, right? And then I, I also speak with Mr. Watson as well. Um, Apparently there's an issue with the first SWAT deployment where a lot of people are going down the elevator shaft and dying. There is a hacking tool we have available to us. So if you know a suspect is barricaded downstairs and we can access it through an elevator, you can hack into the elevator and unlock it and use the elevator as a means to get downstairs to the suspect and apprehend him or, um, you know, neutralize him. Don't well, try what to was guided by us is for us to not even try to go down to that choke point because it's a one way in and a one way out and they have the uh, advantage in holding those angles, so. That's going to be also a problem is um, you're walking into basically a gauntlet of bullets. So that's why at best it's probably to hold off angles and wait for them to pop back up because they have to leave eventually, right? So it's better to just hold angles and to let them come upstairs. And then that way you can engage with them in a, in a, in a more safer manner. However, if they're not trying to leave, then we have to go inside and take them out. So it's going to be a game of chicken who makes the first move and depending on who's inside. Anything else you guys want to talk about that happened during the previous shift? Things you want to point out? Things are happening? Issues you guys want to talk about? Yeah, one more thing. Sorry, no, I'm, I'm going on about the vault. So uh, Dean Watson said he didn't necessarily give a fuck about hostages. And that obviously he's not going to care because money's number one. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not SWAT. Never mind, I'm not SWAT. But I was just going to say, uh, how do you treat hostages in that situation? Uh, at the casino, if they bring in the hostage, I'll treat like the, the city vault or, um, you know, the Bobcat, right? Same way kind of thing. And then uh, okay. we'll go on a chase, and then when it's right, we, we can escalate and engage with them and try to um, end it, right? So, But if they have a hostage, let's just negotiate with them, show good faith, and then we'll go from there. And if a pursuit happens, mm -hmm. it happens. We chase after them and try to be aggressive in the pursuit, spiking, petting, and we'll go from there, right? However, if they don't have a hostage, then all bets are off. And if you see them with a firearm, they, they either brandish it or point it, and you tell them to not do so, or... They open fire on you at first and engage with them and neutralize them, right? So. Does that answer everybody's questions here? Yeah. Okay. I, I know there'll be some growing pains. I know it's not going to be very easy, but we'll get better, right? Things will get better. Um, if you have any um, ideas you want to float, just let me know and we'll talk about it. I really appreciate everybody being here. Thank you for showing up to a shift two meeting. This is the end. You all dismiss, go out there, do your job, make me proud, and uh, be safe and go back home, right? So, thank you.